Yes, what up folks, it's Alex here and welcome to five-ish minute Friday, slightly longer than usual, this one. Now, in this video though, I am gonna show you how to create that really cool, old, aged, vintage film effect within DaVinci Resolve. Now, we're not gonna to touch on the color grading side of things, I'm just gonna use a LUT for this video. There's loads of great tutorials out there already showing you how to create that color grading effect. Instead, what I'm gonna focus on is the actual visual artifacts and that sort of thing. Now, we're gonna do it all within the Edit tab using completely free effects. We're not gonna use any overlays and we're not even gonna step foot into Fusion either. Now, the LUT we're gonna use is available from freshlut.com. It's linked down in the description below. You can go there, you can download it and you can apply it and use it completely for free. Also down in the description is a link to my video I made in the past on using fresh LUTs. Follow that video, it'll show you how to download them and how to install them within your DaVinci Resolve. Right, with all that out of the way, let's crack open DaVinci Resolve and take a look, shall we? So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and we're on the Edit tab and I've already got my timeline set up as normal. So the very first thing we're going to do is open up the Effects Library, expand the Toolbox, we're going to come down to Effects, and then we're gonna grab an adjustment clip and we're gonna put that above our footage like so. We're just gonna lengthen that out to be the same length as our clip. Now, what we're gonna do now is apply our LUT. So for now, I'm just gonna to go to my adjustment clip, click on color. I've got my LUT open here and I've got the one we're gonna use, which is called Memories. We're just gonna double click to apply that LUT like so. Then we're gonna shoot back into the Edit tab. So now we've got this nice faded look, we can start to add some effects. So with the effects library still open, toolbox, then we're gonna to go to open effects this time. We're gonna scroll down until we see the resolve FX stylized area, and we're gonna start off with the scan lines. So just drag that onto your adjustment clip like so. So give the adjustment clip a click, open up the inspector, shoot into the open effects tab, and then you've got all the different options for the scan lines within there. Now ignore the first few, come down to color. What I like to do is just to change these offsets. So we've got red, green, and blue. So if I just reduce the red one, you see you get this little red line underneath. You can do the same with greens and blues and just play with those until you've got a look which looks right for you. So I'm gonna go with about that. Now the scan lines, there's not quite enough of them. They're a little bit fat and chunky. So we're gonna scroll up until we see the line frequency we're just gonna increase that just to make them a little bit smaller. Now it can be hard to see this, so what I recommend you do, set it to something, I'm gonna go with about 16, and then we're gonna hit Control and F on our keyboard to go full screen, and then we've got a slightly better idea of how it's gonna look. So I'm happy with that, 16, 18, something around there seems to work well. So we're done with our scan lines, we're gonna go back to our open effects, we're gonna scroll down until we see film damage, and then we're gonna drag that and add that one to our adjustment clip. Again, inspector, open effects, you'll still see scan line, so just double click at the top to minimize that. Double click on film damage to open that one. And then we've got all of our settings in here. First thing you wanna play with is the film blur. So you can have loads of film blur, or you can reduce it right down. I'm gonna go with 0.1 because it blurs it nicely, but we can still see our scan line, so that works for me. We can then adjust the temperature shift and tint shift if we want to. We can mess around with the vignette, so we can increase and decrease the vignettes. And then we can also play with the dirt. So if you just increase this dirt density, you can see it better. So we've got these big pieces of dirt here. And if we hit play, you can see them darting around the screen. So I'm gonna go with about two, because I don't want them to be too visible. But again, feel free to experiment with all these settings as you wish. And then we've also got scratch. So I don't know if you can see, there's a line just over here that's darting back and forth. That's our scratch. We can disable it if we don't want it, and then we can also mess with the color, the positioning, the width. And we can even add additional scratches if we want to. So again, feel free to experiment with them as you wish. I'm just gonna leave the one default as it is for now. So this is starting to look a little bit more like it. What we're gonna do next, scroll down even further until you see camera shake and apply that onto your adjustment clip. So again, Open effects, we'll close the scan lines, we'll go to camera shake. What I like to do for this one, come down to the shake quality and change it from cine to square wave. Then put the randomness scale right up to the top. And if we hit play, it's gonna be really jittery, jumping around all over the place like so. 
It's going too quick for us. So at the very top here, you've got motion scale and speed scale. So motion is how much it's going to move and speed is the speed that it's going to move. So I'm just going to change that to 0.2 and then the speed scale also to 0.2. But again, feel free to experiment with these. Get something that works for you. I just like those little bumpy movements every now and again like that. Now the very last one to apply, we need to scroll back up and we're going to apply stop motion. But we're not going to apply this to a, our adjustment clip. We're going to apply this to our actual footage. We're going to give our footage a click. Same thing, inspector, open effect. And then you've got this frame repeat. So I'm just going to set this to 10 so you can see what it's doing. And it's going to repeat every 10 frames, which is going to give us this really jittery stop motion look. Now, we don't want it to be quite that jittery, but I'm going to set it to be about three. And then it's just going to repeat every three frames which gives it a much less smooth, jittery sort of look, which makes it look more like film. So we're nearly there. The last thing to do is just to change our aspect ratio to add our borders on the left and right hand side. Now there's loads of ways that you can do this with overlays and that sort of thing, but I've got a nice easy way which seems to work well for me. Go back to your adjustment clip again. This time in the inspector, shoot over to the video tab. Scroll down until you see the cropping area and expand that. And then what we're going to do is just reduce this softness until we get a decent border at the top and bottom. So about minus 40 seems to work well. And then we're going to adjust the crop left and crop right. So we're going to crop in. I'm going to go with about 240. And we're going to 240 on the right as well. And now we've got this nice looking frame with our black edges on the left and right side. If you want to, I quite like to add a little bit of angle. Let's go with one degree of angle as well. It just makes it look that little bit jankier. And there we go. Now, if your frame doesn't quite fit your footage, you need to make any changes you can do. Just click on your footage in the video tab, transform. You can do all your usual adjustments like zooms, positions, angles, do whatever you want to do to make your footage fit. Now, of course, you may want to save this to use it as a later date. So give your adjustment clip a click. Once again, inspector, this time video. At the top, you've got effect and name. I'm gonna call this old film look. I've got a power bin set up. Again, if you don't know about power bins, check the description, there's a link in there to one of my previous videos. We're gonna grab our old film look, put that into our power bin, and there it is. And now whenever we want to apply this visual effect, we can do, we can just open our power bin from any other project, drag it onto our timeline, hit play, and there we go. Easy peasy, job done. Now, of course, nothing I've done is set in stone. Experiment with all of the different options, settings, and effects to get a look which is right for you. And that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, thumbs up, comments or feedback down below. And if you're new here, you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, I've changed my setup again. Let me know down in the comments what you think of it. I'm using some new lights, which I'm going to be talking about on the channel very shortly. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching all. Hope you all have a brilliant weekend. Take it easy. I'll see you next time. Bye.